Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is our physician, the Lord is our healer. The works of the devil. In part one of the perfect redemption plan, we have seen God's dream of having a family and communing with them. Satan, who was envious of the relationship God had with mankind, and because they were in the image and likeness of God, came to crash the party. He deceived mankind and we fell and were kicked out of God's presence. With the fall of mankind came death, sicknesses, diseases, torments, etc. Satan is not satisfied to carry people with him into hell, but also wants to make their life miserable and painful on earth. He wants to shorten their days on earth, so that they won't have time to give their life to Christ and be delivered from the power of darkness. God has a plan, not only to save our souls from hellfire, but also to cure all our sicknesses and diseases, to make our life enjoyable on earth. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested or revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 verse 8 The thief who is Satan comes but to steal, kill and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, to the full till it overflows. John 10 verse 10 Chapter 2 the right disposition of the heart to receive the manifestations of God's promises. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues, limitations, borders and boundaries of life. Proverbs 4 verse 23 For as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7 how we believe and understand things in our heart is very crucial to the manifestations of the promises of God in our life. Spiritual truths are perceived with the eyes of the heart, which are the eyes of faith. Spiritual truths are received and understood with the heart, even the heart of faith, not with the mind. And spiritual truths are heard with the ear of faith. You can have your natural eyes wide open, your natural ear perfectly open, and the intellect of a savant, even a theologian, yet you miss the simple truths of God's word and ways. Jesus says, This people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Matthew 13, verse 15 to 16. My prayer is that the eyes of our heart will be enlightened to see and understand spiritual truths and spiritual ears may be open to hear the truths of the gospel so that we can have the manifestations of God's promises in our life, healing, signs, wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I also, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love to all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Ephesians 1 verse 15 to 18 How we hear and read spiritual truths matters a lot, or the disposition of our heart when we hear or read spiritual truths matters a lot to the manifestations of those truths in our life. Therefore be careful how you hear, for whoever has, to him shall be given, and whoever has not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seems to have. Luke 8 verse 18 It is also our responsibility to be like the Christians of Berea, who checked whether what they were taught was in accordance with the counsel of the written word of God. For if what is taught is not in line with God's word, you will be robbed of the blessings of the Lord. 
As ministers of Jesus, we ought to only speak and teach God's people in line with the written word of God, as was Paul's standard. He says, Therefore, having obtained help from God, I stand until this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets, Joshua to Malachi, and Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy, said was going to happen. Acts 26 verse 22 Jesus tells us, If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With that measure which you measure, it shall be measured to you, and to you who hear, more shall be given. For he who has, more shall be given to him, and he who has not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. Mark 4 verse 23 to 25 some ministers of the gospel, who do not know how to rightly divide the Holy Scriptures, tell their congregation to reject the whole Old Testament, rejecting the four gospels, and only read the chapters after the resurrection of Jesus in the gospels. They reject the writing of the other apostles of Jesus, and only read the writings of Paul. Paul tells us, Study earnestly to present yourselves approved to God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane, vain babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their word will eat like a gangrene among whom are Harmanius and Philetus, who have erred concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and who overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knew those who are his, and let every one who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 to 19 They are advocating a revolution instead of a reformation from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. But we know that Paul taught us it is a reformation from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. Paul tells us, now when these things were ordained in this way, the priests always went into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But once in a year into the second, the high priest goes alone, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Spirit signifying by this that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. For it was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him who did the service perfect as regards the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and different kinds of washings and fleshly ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But when Christ had become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, nor by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once for all into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews 9 verse 6 to 12 What is the definition of revolution? Remember, Paul is talking about two different tabernacles in Hebrews 9, or two different administrations of the household of God, even the kingdom of God. Revolution is the entire change in the constitution of government. For instance, in the French Revolution, they removed their king and established a republic. Then, what is the definition of reformation? Reformation is correction or amendment of life, manners, or of anything vicious or corrupt or abused. By way of eminence or elevation to a higher standard, it is a change of religion from the corruptions of popery or any other man-made religion to its primitive purity. Like Martin Luther started the Protestant Reformation in A.D. 1517. That is why, when you read the Gospel, you see Jesus saying, You have heard, but I say to you, 
And when you read the epistles of the apostles, they will also be quoting from the prophets in the Old Testament and tell you how it's been fulfilled. The animal sacrifices were removed and replaced with a better sacrifice, which is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself tells us, Do not think that I have come to abolish or destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish or destroy them, but to fulfill or to perfect them. Matthew 5 verse 17 NIV just like when they abolish the death penalty or they abolish slavery or abolish the law of apartheid. These laws were not amended or reformed, they were destroyed or abolished, and in other words there was an entire change in the constitution of governments, even a revolution. Jesus Christ did not come to bring a revolution to the kingdom of God, but a reformation. His apostles did not come to bring a revolution after his resurrection by removing the law, even the five books of Moses and the prophets, even the books from Joshua to Malachi. No, they elevated things to a higher standard of his primitive purity and removed the corruption of man-made religion. That is what Martin Luther understood. That is what also the Pentecostals in the days of Azusa Street Revival understood. They used to call themselves people of the primitive faith. They even understood that the restoration of the gifts of the Spirit was not a revolution, but a reformation. Jesus always spoke in line with the written words of Moses and the prophets, even from Genesis to Malachi. For he did not come to destroy them, but to perfect them. The blood of bulls and goats could not perfect the worshipper, as Paul explained in Hebrews 9, so a better blood perfected the worshipper, even the blood of Jesus. If you reject Moses and the prophets, you are a foolish Christian. Jesus says, O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Luke 24 verse 25 to 27. Paul also only spoke in line with Moses and the prophets according to Acts 26:22. Peter tells us that what Moses and the prophets wrote, even the prophecy of scripture, is a more sure word of prophecy that we should heed. He says, We also have a more sure word of prophecy, to which you do well to take heed, as to a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the day star arises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture came into being of its own private interpretation. For prophecy was not born at any time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke, being born along by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1 verse 19 to 21 Moses and John say such Christians will have their portion removed from the book of life. I testify unto every man who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Revelation 22 verse 18 to 19 You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 All the things I command you, be careful to do it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Deuteronomy 12 verse 32 And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Exodus 32 verse 33 You see, John was referring to these three scriptures of Moses when he concluded the book of Revelation. My advice to you is, 
Depart from such fools who tell you not to read the Old Testament again and are also removing scriptures from the New Testament. God will add the plagues to your life and remove your name from his book of life. Do not suffer with them. Save your soul today. They have been deceived by the devil. Do not suffer the same punishment they are going to suffer. You have a choice today to do right. Let us therefore have the right disposition of heart to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God so that it can yield increase in our lives, having been born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible through the living word of God and abiding forever. 1 Peter 1 verse 23 let us not be like the Hebrews in the wilderness who limited God as it is written. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78 verse 41 God wants to do for every one of us exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3 verse 20 Remember, we are laborers together with God, meaning we have a part to play in the manifestations of the promises of God in our life and people around us. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 He left the disposition of the heart for us to prepare. As it is written, the preparations of the heart belong to man or are the responsibility of that individual and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Proverbs 16 verse 1 Now some people miss their deliverance and miracle because they stumble over the vessel God is using to bring the revelation of the ways of God to them. Paul says, Therefore, a promise being left to enter into his rest, let us fear lest any of you should seem to come short of it. For also we have had the gospel preached as well as them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Hebrews 4 verse 1 to 2 There must be a mixing of faith with the promises we have heard for us to receive the manifestation of those promises in our life or the life of people we are ministering to. How is it done then? It is simple. When you hear the word of God or read it, first of all, let there be expectation in your heart that God will perform it. Second, believe that it is not the minister of the gospel speaking to you and writing to you, but God himself speaking and writing to you, provided what is being said and written by the minister of the gospel lines up with the written word of God. About our expectations it is written, do not let your heart envy sinners, and any born-again Christian who is having manifestations of the promises of God in his life, but be in fear of Jehovah all the day long. For surely there is a hereafter, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 23 verse 17 to 18 My son, eat honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb is sweet to your palate so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. When you have found it, then there shall be a reward, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24 verse 13 to 14 So when you receive the knowledge of the wisdom of God according to the written word of God, be in great expectation that God will perform it. Then you shall be rewarded by the manifestation of your deliverance and miracle. About now, the minister of the gospel speaking and writing to you in line with the written word of God, it is written, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous one in the name of a righteous one will receive a just one's reward. Matthew 10 verse 41 now any minister of the gospel is first of all a preacher of righteousness and if he or she is truly sent by God, he or she will address things in your life that need changing so that you can be righteous and practice righteousness. 
Peter tells us, God did not spare the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth one, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. He condemned them to destruction, setting an example to men intending to live ungodly. And he delivered righteous Lot, oppressed with the lustful behavior of the lawless. For that righteous one living among them, in seeing and hearing, his righteous soul was tormented from day to day with their unlawful deeds. 2 Peter 2 verse 5 to 8 Some Christians, when the preacher of righteousness addresses what needs to be changed in their lives, are offended. They take it personally, thinking that the minister of righteousness is against them. Therefore they shut their heart and say, This minister does not speak from God. Paul says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh who corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For truly they chastened us for a few days according to their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now chastening for the present does not seem to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who are exercised by it. Hebrews 12 verse 9 to 11 They will say, Talk to me about my healing, deliverance, and miracles. They are offended at the preacher of righteousness who is correcting their sinful lifestyle and ungodly ways, not knowing that indirectly they are being offended at Jesus Christ. Jesus says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Luke 7 verse 23 Do you mean Jesus Christ can even offend some Christians? Yes, Carnal Christians, if you truly love your Father God and His Word, you will not stumble by being offended in Jesus and His preacher of righteousness who is correcting your carnal ways so that you can be a partaker of the holiness of our Father God. Great peace have they which love your law, written word, nothing shall offend them. Psalm 119 verse 165 if you love God and His Word, none of the correction He tells you to implement in your life will offend you. Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15 Again Jesus answered and said unto every one of us, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. John 14 verse 23 He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous one in the name of a righteous one will receive a just one's reward. Matthew 10 verse 41 Now we need to understand that in the New Covenant the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 verse 10 Jesus Christ is the prophet who dwells in every born-again believer, Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. Though not all born-again Christians are in the office of the prophet, but every born-again Christian is a prophetic person, because Christ Jesus the prophet dwells in him and speaks through him. Now a prophet is God's spokesman. He does not speak of himself or have private interpretation of the written word of his own selfish interest. When he speaks to you and writes to you, it is not him speaking and writing, but the Holy Spirit of God speaking and writing to you through him. Matthew 10 verse 20 Paul says, You know that through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel to you before, and you did not despise my temptation in my flesh, nor did you spurn it, but you received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. Galatians 4 verse 13 to 14 These people received Paul as if it were Jesus Christ speaking and writing directly and personally to them. They did not stumble over Paul's physical appearance and speech. Some stumbled over these things and missed their deliverance and miracles. 
For indeed, they say, the letters are weighty and powerful, but the bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 10 Moses was slow of speech and slow of tongue. Exodus 4 verse 10 those who stumble over the slowness of speech and tongue of Moses miss their miracles and deliverance, but those who received him as God's spokesman, even as if it were God speaking and writing directly to them, were rewarded by having the manifestation of God's promises. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. Exodus 7 verse 1